as we juggle around the possibilities, uh, one thing, uh, sometimes you cannot overlook, at least in my opinion, the obvious. One of the most noticeable things about Jelani was he was a tall, attractive, very bright young man. He's going to a school, uh, the statistics that I checked on the school, the school is 75% white. And certainly it's not inconceivable that some of the white young ladies may very well have been attracted to him. And as a result of that, there may have been some others, black or white, that may be in extreme opposition to that. Perhaps at the parental level, um, certainly among the students. Uh, we know these things happen. Don't pretend they don't. We know these things happen. It's unfortunate, but these things do happen. All you have to do is look at the Ahmad Arbery and there's a host of other cases. And that's not to suggest everyone white has some opposition to everyone black. We all know that that, that too is not a 100% truth. Many of us have associates, white and black alike. So don't go to the gutter on this one. Now, I have to also suggest for consideration, at the very least, that um, when you look at the painting of the phone, the, paint, the phone was pinged uh, to the uh, location. There was a, a, spe a specified time. I think I mentioned that earlier. And so, in my view, first and foremost, if the phone is turned off. Once the phone is turned off, and I'm talking about the power, not going to do not disturb, but the power itself, then the phone can no longer be pinged. So with some of the uh, considerations that perhaps uh, Jelani had been, uh, let's say, taken by carjacking, kidnapping, something along those lines. You have to think about this. If a person is doing something like that and they are concerned about communication, everybody knows phones can be tracked, especially young people. They're going to get rid of that phone right away. The fact that the phone was found in Peru approximately some hours time, one hour away from the, uh, the dispensary and or the school, one report, from one report to the next, the slight variations. But at the end of the day, that's a considerable period of time for someone to uh, maintain a phone, even if the phone is turned off and just subsequently throw it away. So the likelihood that, in my view, that at least on or about that time, uh, someone kidnapped or uh, carjacked, I think it's more likely, more probable that Jelani, there were one or more persons in his vehicle that he knew. I doubt this was a situation that um, started any other way. Furthermore, if we look at some more information, the fact that the clothes were changed, he was at school early, he had uh, an appointment, uh, or at least was supposed to see a professor about something that was important and engaging for him. Uh, he didn't make it, and this was so far away from the, the person that he was. So what, what takes a young man uh, uh, away from something important like that. For the most part, 25 years of age. If you haven't gotten to that age as yet, you pretty much can guess where I'm going. Certainly the older people know. A woman. A woman or friends. Some special activity. The change of clothes. His change of clothes, as I looked at the video, those clothes seem to have fit him fairly well. And at some point, 
uh, the mother, bless her soul, bless her soul, the mother found, uh, 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 had, a, had an opportunity to look at the clothing and what she was able to ascertain was that uh, for the most part, they were Jelani's clothing. And she made mention of the sneakers, if I recall correctly. So here's what we're, what we're looking at. He had a set of clothes more dress-like in the early part of the day when he was at the school. Within two hours, somewhere within two hours, he changed to uh, casual wear. And he goes to get uh, 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 cannabis, marijuana. It was said by one report that the clothing was found in the vehicle. The report went on to say that the specific clothing found in the vehicle was the clothing he was wearing as he entered the uh, cannabis dispensary. Contrary to that, in an interview with the mother, uh, she mentioned that the police sent her some sort of an email with, uh, I guess, a video of some sort of the clothing. And subsequently, she said that that was the clothing that he was wearing as seen at the uh, cannabis dispensary. That, that, that is very, very, very concerning. And I'll tell you what. First and foremost, mention is made of the great swimmer that he was. And we have to keep in mind, this young man is studying to be a doctor. Come on, give me a break. He couldn't find an easier way to kill himself? This was no suicide. This was no suicide. And as we look further, who, who's going to go through the trouble of changing clothes? To, who gives a damn? Who's going to go through the trouble of changing clothes just to jump in the river and supposedly commit suicide? Highly, highly impractical. Uh, extraordinarily inconceivable, to say the least. Aha, but those clothes being found at the uh, riverbank, uh, that's very, very concerning. Certainly what it implies to me is that he was either instructed to take those clothes off. Perhaps someone took them off for him. Now keep in mind, he's, I think six, I think it said that he's about six, two, at least he's above six feet. So he's, 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 he's not a lightweight. He may have been somewhat slender, but uh, he, uh, he probably could handle himself, I'm sure, to some extent at least. Except being overpowered, uh, what actually happened to him, I, I certainly couldn't begin to guess, especially considering what's said about the way his uh, unfortunate body was found, you see. Not being able to discover any degree of trauma and all of that sort of uh, thing. But something clearly uh, happened to him. Those clothes being taken off or him having to remove those clothes uh, was a way, in my view, of humiliating him. Let that sink in, humiliating him. Humiliating him. So... Certainly, that's an area of concern with respect to police canvassing or whoever, be it the private investigator or otherwise. It's going to be a big task, mind you. But that's certainly an area of consideration. Uh, when, when we talk about uh, when, it's, when it's, the media makes mention of the distance where the bridge, uh, where the bridge is, the 251 bridge, Illinois uh, River Bridge, and where the body was found uh, some considerable distance away, south on the east side. 
So when you think about it, his body having been in the water for such a considerable period of time, it's, it's not unusual to consider that the uh, current of the river may have moved the body uh, uh, to that particular area. Now, I'm not exactly certain as to where the clothing were found, but they may very well be an indicator of where a particular thing happened. Now, just to backtrack a little bit, another news media says that the clothing that he was wearing at the uh, cannabis uh, uh, dispensary was found in the vehicle. Very, uh, very conflicting. Certainly doesn't make things easy. So it, somebody made a mistake somewhere. Perhaps the clothing that they were talking about were his dress clothing at the school. I couldn't speak on it because I don't know which is the actual case. We also, we also know of there, uh, there were two young ladies from the school who um, they found, gee, I'm trying to remember what it was they actually found. I, I don't recall whether it was uh, the lanyard, where it has a, had a school ID, or the phone. But in any event, uh, what subsequently happened was they, or their parents or both, decided they would uh, seek uh, legal counsel. And so... Obviously, the attorney is going to advise them not to speak to anyone. What needs to be looked at? Many things. Many, many things. Certainly, the cameras, and a, a lot of uh, premises have cameras these days. Presumably, the, uh, the uh, place where Jelani had uh, went for coffee, coffee shop, or whatever it's referenced as, more than likely has one or more cameras. Uh, I, I, I couldn't conceive that they haven't been looked at if in fact they have them, but presumably they do. And that's a concern. So what do you do with the information you get? Each person that may have, I say may, have interacted with Jelani while he was at the, uh, the uh, coffee shop, let, let's say, um, they become a person, uh, let's say, to interview. You want to try to see what, if anything, happened. And of course, the way you do this type of thing would be at the time that Jelani was seen to have been there, that's the best time to go and ask questions as opposed to routinely making a visit at any, any, um, any time of the day. People who go to cafes for coffee and that sort of thing generally do it around the same time of the day, sometimes more than once a day. But that's basically where you would start. That would be very, very important. Uh, the other... Uh, Obviously, from what I understand, uh, there are some people who have uh, been spoken to at the uh, dispensary. That certainly would be a, a place of uh, interest with respect to cameras. And um, another thing, I'm not aware as to whether or not there are um, tolls that may have been crossed in whatever movement uh, Jelani's vehicle was making towards the uh, bridge, at least getting into the city of Peru. That, too, can be something uh, helpful. Uh, he, if he had an easy pass, clocking when that may have happened, what day it may have happened, what hour it may have happened, all of these things, ultimately, they're pieces of a puzzle, uh, can be helpful in looking at his situation. And as far as cameras are concerned, like some people say, well, not every place has a camera. But listen, and oh, well, how much good is the camera going to do? Cameras can be very helpful. Don't forget, a lot of people who were uh, called into the criminal justice system uh, around the uh, January, January 6th, uh, 
uh, occurrence at the uh, Capitol kind of spells the whole thing out. Um, that's how they were caught. They were caught on camera. Used to be a TV program called <laughs> Caught on the Camera. Yeah, dry joke, can't help myself. But in any event, um, there's certainly a lot of things to look at. The um, police need to get a sense of the fact that the body was found as far away from the bridge as it was. There are calculations that can be made that will give a reasonable estimate. I guess this is part in part where the FBI would come in and get it sort of an assessment as to where uh, Jelani's body entered the river. Uh, I don't know how exact of a science uh, it is, but uh, we're in a very, very technological age and a lot of these things can be done. Other areas of concern, obviously, would be the school, would be the school. Where do you look with the school? Well, you start with anyone who's willing to talk to you, because that's generally a task. There are people, in my opinion, that probably know something and are more than likely afraid to come forward. And uh, this is not unusual in incidents like this. So if you really want to be, let's say, you want to think progressively, one of the things you want to start with are those students that may live in the city of Peru. They may not have been directly involved in anything, but may have heard something or noticed something that was peculiar that hasn't been brought to the attention of the authorities or the police, if you will. That's a big concern. How you approach them is going to be even a greater concern. And so sometimes the direct approach is, is really not going to get you what you need. You have to go through people who know people. And these people hopefully uh, can, let's say, pierce the armor or the protective gear, so to speak. It's very important. Now, I remember the mother, um, uh, mom saying that um, there were people in the local area that were they're presumptively friends, and they've been somewhat on the quiet side. That's a bit concerning. Usually when people have little to nothing to say, they may have an idea as to what may have happened. At the very least, they can talk about some of the generalities um, uh, with Jelani that, uh, let's say, the mother or the family may not have been aware about. And I know they're a close-knit family, and no disrespect intended. But uh, I have children. They don't tell me everything. They tell me a lot. But there's some things, uh, even people, grown-ups, they go to their grave without mentioning. We have our little skeletons here, our little skeletons there. I don't. We go to church every Sunday, and we still have a skeleton. We're still human. And it's possible there may, be, there may have been something going on, not something that would cause them to want to commit suicide, but there may have been something going on that uh, the family is not aware of and one or more persons are. And that can be a significant lead to what uh, may have happened uh, to Jelani. And again, none of this is, in, I'm in no way trying to disrespect this incredible family. Um, incredible young man. I'd like to take a moment to give Extraordinary credit to a young lady. Uh, see, what was her name again? Tangela. <laughs> Tangela Young. Uh, she had a video that talked about this particular uh, incident, and, and I just gravitated to it. I've looked at a lot of media. I looked at a lot of videos. And 
uh, a lot of things have fallen short for this uh, beloved young man. And hopefully this video and others, other people getting on board and saying something may uh, promote a more vigilant uh, response to uh, this incident. And, and at some point, hopefully some point soon, uh, this whole thing can be ferreted out and this young man can rest in peace. On that note, as always, dream with purpose. Share, subscribe, leave a comment.